were at Bible school, one of our lecturers once said that the worship team um, sets the stage for Jesus to come and move among us. And that's what I just experienced tonight again and always when we have worship, that the worship is just setting the stage. It's, it's just setting the stage for Jesus to come and move and to touch our hearts. Um, so this whole week while praying about tonight and asking God what's on his heart, God kept on saying to me that um, he will tell me with at the scent. So the scent was last night. It started yesterday afternoon at five. So I was just, um, I, I, ha I was talking to God about a specific message that I had in my heart, but, I, but the Holy Spirit kept on saying to me, no, it's not time for that yet. Wait for the saints. I'll, I'll share with you what I want to share. So right at the beginning with the first session that Daniel Kalende from um, Christ for All Nations spoke, God came to, to me and he said, I want to shine my spotlight on your heart. And um, the Holy Spirit reminded me of the very first time when the spotlight of God was um, turned on me, where I felt his spotlight. And that was um, on the 7th of January in 1989. <laughs> I was sitting in my flat in Kruenstadt, where I was working for a year then already. And it was a Saturday evening. And suddenly, the spotlight of God came over me. And the Holy Spirit made me aware, become aware of the fact, so deeply aware, if I would die now at that, at that moment, if I would die, I will be in hell. And I cried out to God and I asked him, God, please just come and take my life. I surrender my life to you. Up to that stage, I've been a churchgoer. In that moment, God came into my life. The blood of Jesus cleansed me. And suddenly I became a child of God. No longer just being a church goer, but I became his child. And he started to walk with me and journey with me. And for about a year, I, I then knew I'm born again. But I was still pretty much walking in two worlds. Because I, I enjoyed so many of the stuff that the world had to offer. I enjoyed um, organizing sockies for weekends on Saturday nights and Friday nights. I loved doing that, and I would organize that and do a lot of stuff. And then a, a year later, there was a youth week in Kronstadt, and Cassie Karstens, he had an organization called, um, called SCARES, and they came to Kronstadt. And he ministered, and I went the Sunday night to the church where he preached, and it was an old, it's an old um, sandstone building in Kronstadt, and this church, uh, the roof of this church is like a, um, now what's the word, cupel, dome like a dome, yes, thank you. So it's like a dome with these uh, pillars running up to the center, and um and, and I was sitting there, and he then ju just suddenly said, he told the story about the, these soldiers enlisting into the army. And he said they, they were standing in a row, and the sergeant major came to ask them their names. And he, uh, he came to this one stood a soldier, and the soldier just mumbled his name. And the sergeant major couldn't hear what his name is. And, and suddenly the sergeant major said to him, speak up. Or go, speak up with what your name is, or change your name, and go. You cannot be a soldier and not speak up and say your name boldly and bravely. And suddenly the Lord spoke to me, and he said to me, you cannot say that you are a child of me, you are a Christian, but you live, still live with one foot in the world and one foot in my world, I want you to, to, make, to make a choice now. And he showed me that roof and he said to me, everything in your life, I must be on top and everything in your life needs to flow out of your relationship with me. That's what I, I desire. If you don't want to make that choice right now, the Lord said to me, when you walk out of that door tonight, you are no longer saying that you are a Christian. 
that was so shocking to me that God, I, I, I heard it so clearly in my spirit. I can't say that I heard God's audible voice, but I heard his voice in my spirit, in my heart. And it was so clear that he said to me, either you change your name or you change your identity. And I knew I had a choice to make in that moment. And I said to, I said to God, God, I give you my all. I give you my all. I can remember I went home that night and I took my little black and white portable television that I had and I stuck it in my cupboard and I said, I'm no longer going to watch you. <laughs> I just put it in my cupboard. And I had a cleaning lady once a week and, um, and I don't know if they still do it, but that's, at that stage, the SABC television license people would go around <laughs> asking for television license, and I didn't have one. <laughs> but And they came knocking at my flat's door, and my cl cleaning lady said to them, there's no television in this house. You can come in and look. And the television was in the cupboard. I've stuck it in my cupboard uh, for, for a whole year. I didn't watch television. Television. I didn't I, up to today, I'm not listening to secular music. I only listen to, to music that's born in God's heart. That's, that's just my choice that I made then in my life. But God showed his, God took his spotlight and he turned it on, on me first that night in my flat and then that night again in that church. And he called me into a place where I just am willing and want to surrender my life to him. And God just reminded me of that last night when he said to me, I want to shine my spotlight on your heart. And I believe tonight he's saying he wants to shine his spotlight on each of us, on our hearts. And um, God's spotlight, when God turns his spotlight onto us, it's never, never to expose us. And it's never, ever to break us down. And it's never, ever to, to come and to embarrass us. That's not God's character. And that's not what he wants to do. And so often we choose to run away from his spotlight because we are so afraid that his spotlight looks like the spotlight of the world that we live in. So when God comes tonight and he says to me and to you, I want to shine my spotlight on your life, we have two choices the one choice is to run away. The one choice is to say, thank you, but no thank you. I'm happy with my life the way it is. I know of all the dust. I know of all the dirt that is there. And I don't want any light to be shown on that. Or I can come and I can say, God, here I am. I want to embrace your light. Because I don't want anything that's not of you to be in my life. I want to embrace and I want to get rid of that which you want to show me in your light. And then when we embrace his spotlight, we get to that place where we discover his grace and where we discover his love. Because his spotlight is filled with love and his spotlight is filled with grace. And so often some people just constantly runs away from God's spotlight. And they confuse it by saying that we, I am sent. Often people will get, get to a place, will go to a church, go to a ministry, go somewhere, and then they will be there and say, God sent me here. And then God comes and God says, but can I, can I shine my spotlight on your life? And then all of a sudden, they will go to the leadership and say, I'm now going away. God is sending me to this and that place. And then they go again. And then they are there for a month, two months, a year, two years, may maybe three, very seldom three years. And then they will get to that place where God is shining his light on their lives. And suddenly they get sent again. And God seems to be confused because God just sent them to a place for, and then suddenly a month later, uh, he's changing his mind and he's sending them again and he's sending them again and he's sending them again. But it's when we are confused with God actually calling us to come before he can send us. Because God do want to send us. 
That is, that's what he tells us in his word. When we go to scripture in the New Testament, we read in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, it's that very famous uh, scripture where Jesus, just before Jesus, it's the last, one of the last commands Jesus gives. He says, um, uh, it says, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, so Jesus is sending his disciples. He's saying, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I'm always, even to the end, I, or I'm always with you, even to the end of the age. Amen. So here Jesus come and he says, go. He's sending and then in Acts 1, 8, this, it's another sending scripture. It says, um, but you shall receive power from the Holy Spirit uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So again, God is sending us. He's saying, I want you to go. I want you to make disciples. I'm sending you. I'm sending you to be my witness. And in, in the Old Testament, there's that, this very... Um, Popular scripture, and also last night with the saint Daniel Kalenda, uh, f- referred to the scripture Isaiah 6 verse 8, where um, Isaiah says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And so often we want to, we want to say, God, here I am, send me. Um, we do have a few prerequisites. We do have a few conditions, God, but uh, we are willing to go. You can send me. Just don't let your light shine on me because that might be a problem. Um, because we, we, we really keep on comparing God's light to the light of the world around us, which is a critical light, which is just mental light, which is not a light of love. But um, Daniel Kalenda said yesterday, uh, he said, before you can be sent, you have to come. And this is what happens when God shines his light on us for the first time. He's inviting us to come before we can go. It's so important. The first, my first come was that night in my flat when I said, God, I know if I would die today, I'll be in hell. In that moment, I was just so convinced by the Holy Spirit that I am not born again, that I need to surrender my life to Him, and I need to become, I need to be born again. And if you maybe, maybe you're watching on the live stream, maybe you're here tonight, and you have never said to Jesus, Jesus, here is my life. Will you cleanse me with your blood? I surrender my life to you. I want to become a child of God then I want to ask you, please, afterwards, stay behind and talk to one of our leaders to to pray with you and to just to guide you into this first come. Because God says, before you can go, you must come to me. You must come. And then, after that first coming, we get to that place where he, he, he invites us to come on a daily basis so that we can get to know his character, so that we can get to know his heart. He wants us to get to know his emotions because you know that God has emotions. God speaks about so much emotion. Sometimes don't really think about the fact that God is a God of emotions and he has emotions. And he created us in his image with emotions. And very often when we start to understand God's emotions, it's so much easier to understand our own emotions. So God wants us to get to know that. He wants us to get to know his love. He wants us to stand in his spotlight so that he can heal us and so that he can restore us. Because that's what his desire is for us. His desire for you and for me is to be in that place where we are near to him and where he gets to restore our hearts, where he, where he can come and say to me and say to you, I love you so much that I cannot leave you the way that you are. There's a, there's a thing in the world where people say, because God is a God of love, He's not going to expect of me to change. (laughs) And that's a lie from the enemy. 
Because God is a God of love. He wants me to become more like Him. Because He knows that enables me to live a life of victory. He knows that place me in a position where I'm not struggling, where I'm not constantly fighting, where I'm not feeling that I'm in a battle the whole time, but where I can walk in, in His abundant life for which He came, for which Jesus died. And um, so often we see people, even people going into ministry, just going, responding on the call to be sent and not coming to God first. And then we, we have seen over the past many years, 29 years that we've been in ministry, we have seen so many people going into the missions field, being in ministry, not allowing God's light to shine on them, to heal them and to restore them. And we have seen how, how brothers and sisters got hurt because they never wanted to come first. They f just wanted to go, but they didn't want to come and say, God, here I am. Will you shine your light on me? Will you heal me and will you restore me? Will you teach me who you are? Will you teach me your character? Will you teach me your love? Because when we start to go out, and, and not everybody is called to be missionaries going into a missions field, going into remote areas, but all of us are called by God to love Him in the first place, but then to shine His light in the world around us. We are called to be His light. We are called to be His salt we're there where we work. There where we go to shop, there where we go for a walk with our dogs, that's all of those places are where God wants to use us. He wants to send us to be his light, to share his good news, to share the gospel. But for us to be able to do that, we first need to know who he is. And we first need to know what he thinks about us. Because very often we are afraid to go when he wants to send us. Because we are more concerned about what people will think about us than what God is saying over us. And that is preventing us from speaking out where we need to speak out. That is preventing us from testifying, being witnesses where we need to testify and where we need to be witnesses because we are more concerned about what the people around us will say than what we are concerned about what God is going to say. Because we don't allow him to shine his spotlight on us to reveal to us who we really are. Because that's actually what happens when we allow God, when we come to God and we ask God, God, will you shine your light on me? I am actually coming to, you, to him and I'm actually saying, God, will you show me what I really look like to you? Because it's not about his light shining on my, on my circumstances or my sin or my wrongdoings. It's about his light shining on me, revealing to me who I am to him. Because that's what he wants to do in the first place. Because when there's something in my life that he doesn't want to be, what he doesn't want in my life, he's not coming to shine his light on that. But he's shining his light on the me that he sees. And then suddenly I realize, but these other things that's in my life is not in line with this me that he is showing me, who, that he sees who I am, the way that he sees me. And then I say, but let me rather get rid of this because that's not part of who I am. That's not who I am in his eyes. That's not who he created me to be. Because he's not coming to shine his light to embarrass or expose. I've already said that. But he's coming to shine his light to show us what he sees, what he created. And he promised to us in his word that he created us fearfully and wonderfully. We read this in Psalm 139. We've quoted that so many times already. He says, I've created you fearfully and wonderfully. That's how he created us, and he wants us to see that. But we are so entangled in the way that the world watch, the world look, the way that the world's light shines, that we think that's the way that God is looking as well. 
And we think that's the way that God's light is shining on us as well. We are so used to the world's light being so critical. We are so used to the world's light being so judgmental that we'd rather run away from a spotlight than to run to a spotlight. But tonight God is inviting us and he's saying, Come to my spotlight, run to my spotlight, run into my spotlight so that I can show you what I think about you, so that I can show you how I feel about you, so that I can show you how to go, how I want to send you, so that I can show you how I want to use you. And when we come to this place, we get to that place where he can fill us with his oil of intimacy and where we can really connect with his heart of love. Um, there's this guy who spoke uh, at the scent. It was right in the middle somewhere. Um, his name is Sa Sammy Rodriguez. He's, a, uh, he's Spanish. And he uh, shared the following. He says... Um, and, and, and when I heard that, I knew that that is what happens when we dare to step into God's spotlight. He said, the enemy would like to confuse you about your identity, who you are, what defines you. And then he said, are you defined by your circumstances? Are you defined by what others say about you? And here is the great, great news of the cross. Christ defines you. But we only discover that, that Christ wants to define us when we are willing to step into that spotlight. When we are willing to step into that place where we come face to face to him, where we allow his light to shine, us, where, shine on us, where we allow his love to draw us closer, then we can get to that place where our circumstances no longer define who we are, where the world around us no longer define who we are, where what people say no longer defines who we are, but where the cross defines who we are, where, the, where what Jesus said on the cross, what Jesus did on the cross defines who we are. He said, you are not defined by what surrounds you. You are defined by God's Spirit inside of you. You are not defined by what surrounds you. If you are in a difficult life circumstance, if you are in a place where you are battling, that's not defining you. The people around you is not defining you. God's spirit that's inside you. Because when you have accepted Jesus Christ to become your savior, the spirit of God took up residence inside of you. And he is the only one who should define who you are. And then he said, you are not defined by the hell you are going through. Some might be going through very difficult circumstances. Some might feel I'm going through hell. But God, but, but uh, this guy said, and, and it's God who set this through him. You are not defined by the hell you are going through, but you are defined by the heaven you are going to. We are defined by our destiny, not by what we are going through at this moment. He wants us to keep our eyes fixed on that, on the finishing line, knowing where we will end up. Because if we allow the hell that we're going through, if we might be going through difficulties, to define us, we might get to a place where we turn away from Him. And where we lose ending up in the final destiny, the the place where he wants us to be. Let heaven define you. Don't let your circumstances define you. You are not defined by your failures. Let the forgiveness of God defines who you are, not your mistakes of yesterday. He said that you are not defined by the likes of many on social media. Who of you like to post on 
social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, and then you go and look constantly, how many likes do I have? How many likes do I have? Oh, I only have five likes. Oh, no, people don't like me. I, oh, I have 100 likes. Wow, they like me. No, I have six likes. They don't like me. Oh, I have 50 likes. Yes, they like me. It's like, you know, when we were little, you will take a daisy and you're wondering if a boy likes you, you will go, he loves me, he loves me not, he loves me, he loves me not, he loves Now, Nowadays, it's social media. They like me, they don't like me. They like me, they don't like me. And we allow social the media to define who we are. So it's not the many likes on social media that defines who we are. He said, this is now Sammy Rodriguez, he said, You are defined by the love of one, not by many likes, by the love of one. You are not defined by what you do for God, but you are defined by by what God already did for you. The cross defines you, the empty tomb. You are defined by the Father. And, And he ended with Galatians 2 verse 20. And it goes like this. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. Jesus defines you. It is not possible to get to this truth. It is only possible to get to this truth that God defines you when you are willing to step into God's spotlight. But then, last night, while I was talking to God about this, and, and, and he started to challenge me with challenges which will come when we choose to also choose to step into his spotlight. And, um, and I felt the Holy Spirit laid on my heart to, to, to lay these challenges before us so that we think about it. He, he, I felt, he said, how many times must God ask you to step out of your comfort zone into his light before you want to do it? Because it's a comfort zone. We, we are so often in a comfort zone of just being at peace, at rest. Everything is going fine in our lives. We go to church. We have friends. We have a Bible study. We read the word every day. But we don't grow. We don't really grow. We, we are not really moving forward. And God says, how, how many times must I ask you to step out of your comfort zone? And, and I wrote this, and please don't, if, if I offend you, please love me again. If you're a parent, and if you're watching, so I wrote it down. I said, parents, are you seeking God's plans and dreams for your kids Or are you planning your kids' lives according to the guidelines of the world? Because the guidelines of the world are so clear with regards to how young people should plan their future. Do this, go there, marry, whatever, go study. So often we we see young people who want to pursue full-time ministry, and then their parents will say, no, there's no way that you can do this. How are you going to take care of yourself as if God can't do it? Are we ashamed of the gospel? What do you do when someone uses the name of Jesus in your presence? What do you do? Do you continue partaking in that conversation? Or do you step out and step up for him? Have you ever dared to pray for a hunger for the word? Because the way that we get to know God better is when we spend time in his word. Have you ever dared to ask him, God, will you give me a hunger for your word? I want to read the word more. Are your fear of man greater, greater than your fear of God? When God shine, God's light shine on, on you in the workplace, are your fear of man, of your colleagues, greater than your fear of God? 
Is your heart breaking for what breaks God's heart? Are you aware of colleagues or people living next door to you or people maybe going to school with you if you are still in school or people studying with you if you are a student? Are you aware of them not knowing God? Are you aware of family members that you love who does not love God? Are you aware of the fact, do you cry over those people? Do you have God's heart? Is your heart breaking because God's heart is breaking over your family members who's not loving him, who's not walking with him? Or are you just having a greater fear for man than to speak out and to speak to them about God's love for them and about the fact that they are on their way to hell? Because that's the reality. If they haven't accepted Jesus, if they're not walking, walking with Jesus, walking with God, they're walking with Satan. There's no two other ways. You are either with God or you are against God. You are either journeying with God or you are journeying in the world with, the, with he who ha is controlling the world with Satan. There's no other ways. What's happening in your life? Are you allowing God's heart, to sh God's light to shine on your heart for your colleagues, for your neighbors, for your family members, for your friends? Are you willing to let God's light shine on you? Earlier I spoke about Paul coming and we spoke about Muslims. There are so many people around us who is worshiping Islam. They are Muslims. They are following the Islam, Islamatic, Islamitic faith, which is a lie. I have heard people say to me in, in my life who might have had Muslim uh, neighbors, oh, they are the kindest people. Yes. Will the kindness get them to God when they die, to an eternity with God? No. They're going to be in hell forever. Are you concerned about that? Are you allowing God's spotlight to shine on your heart with regards to his heart breaking for that people, for that person? Are you willing to step out of God's, of your comfort zone, wherever God wants you to do, and for the sake of his gospel? Are you willing to get out of bed at five on a Tuesday morning, perhaps, if God wants you to join us here in the prayer room to pray for the nations? Or is your bed, your warm bed, especially now in winter, more comfortable? Are you willing to allow God to shine his light on you when you are in the comfort of your home? Are you brave enough as a parent to say, Lord, my child can work for you. I trust you to take care for my child. Take care of my child. Is it okay for you to hear that no one? Is it okay for you that no one hears your story, as long as they hear the story of Jesus? Often we want we want to be in the spotlight. Is it okay for you that God shines His spotlight so on you that you aren't visible, but that He is visible? Is it okay for you that your voice is not heard as long as his voice is heard wherever you are? Too often we want to tell our stories and we want our voice to be heard instead of Jesus' story, instead of what he did for us on the cross. And I wrote this sentence down, and maybe it's for someone watching on the, on the live stream, or maybe for someone here. The Holy Spirit said to me, do not reason your disobedience and your unbelief away. When God's spotlight is shining you, is, is, he, showing, is he shining his light on me, reasoning away what he wants me to do? Reasoning away when he wants me to go and talk to someone? Reasoning away when he wants me to go somewhere and do something? Am I reasoning away my obedience or my disobedience, reasoning it away? Or my unbelief to trust him unconditionally that he will always be faithful to provide? 
And with regards to full-time ministry, if you are a parent and, and God calls your child into full-time ministry, I've never heard of anyone who responded in obedience to God's call in my whole life that God, where God did not provide in everything they needed when they have put their complete trust in Him. We have seen it in our own lives for 29 years. We have seen it in so many people's lives. We have heard the testimony of how God provided for the saint. We have never seen God not providing. Why, if you are a parent and your child comes to you, and, and I don't think this is for anyone in this room. Maybe you are, someone is watching online for who this is. But why, if you are a parent and God, your child comes to you and say, God called me into ministry, why can't you trust God enough? the God of the heaven and the earth, the God who created everything, the God who said to us that everything was made in him and through him. How can you doubt that he will take care of your child? Are you willing to start to trust God for what is impossible to man? But are you willing to start to believe that God can do the impossible in your life? Because, beloved, yes, when God comes with his spotlight, he first just wants to draw us. He wants to show us who we are. He wants to show us how he sees us. But then he wants to get us to that place where we want to step out of our comfort zones and where we will dare to say, God, will you shine your light on my behavior? Will you shine your light on my relationships? Will you shine your light on my heart, on what is truly going on in my heart? Will you shine your light? Because not, don't, God, not, not like little candle, like a birthday candle, so that it's like very soft and gentle and like with a filter. Because I, I actually know what's really going on, but let's just have like a filter, like, like soft light that dims so that it looks nice. You know, you know the way that people edit their photos for social media? When they actually see them, you're like, oh, you have wrinkles. <laughs> but on Facebook, there's none <laughs> on the photos. So let I, God is inviting us tonight to just get to that place where we, where we are willing to say, God, shine your light on me. Because I want to see myself the way that you see me. I want to be defined by you. I want to be defined by what you say over me. But God, I also want to be brave enough to ask you to shine your light on my heart. To shine your light on the intentions of my heart. To shine your light on every aspect of my life. So that I can be sent so that I can connect with you and then be sent out so that the world that's dying around me can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So that the world that's going, that's on their way to hell can make a U-turn and go to you for all eternity. But he wants to shine his light on us first. First we must come before we can be sent. Peter, I'm going to ask Petrus to come, and we're going to close with a time for you to respond to God's invitation to shine His light on you. And I'm asking you tonight to be brave enough to step into His light. Petrus is going to um, minister to us with a song, and during this time, just talk to God about His spotlight. Ask Him. I'm encouraging you to be brave enough to ask him to shine his light on every aspect of your life. And I can ensure you, I can guarantee you, all you are going to feel is his love. Because he, loved, he loves you above all. You are going to love him and you're going to feel his love. And you're not going to to feel exposed, you're not going to feel embarrassed, you're not going to feel condemned or judged, because that's not his character, you are going to feel his love, but it's only possible when we allow his light to come and shine on us, and then after the song, I will close for us in prayer, but during this time, just close your eyes, 
and talk to God about his spotlight that he wants to shine on your heart.